When I, 25 female, was 10, my mom died. When I was 12, my dad remarried. Dad's wife had a tween daughter. Her dad had abandoned her. Dad went from being an okay but not great dad to me to focusing so much on his stepdaughter that there were times he forgot about me. After one incident, when he literally left me behind in a mall in another state, he acted like he felt so bad that he took me out as a sorry on his stepdaughter's birthday. From that day onward, she and I couldn't stand each other and we really didn't wish each other well. We both want the other to go away and we stay away from each other where possible. She told me I didn't deserve an apology because she needed his attention and love more than I did. This happened twice more and Dad would apologize and it would hurt his stepdaughter, but generally I got used to being the one he put last. I put distance between us after I left for college and after a couple of years he realized it was happening. He begged and pleaded with me to try and forgive him. I told him how much it hurt for him to prioritize his stepdaughter so much. I brought up being left behind, the fact that he would promise me a certain gift and then get it for his stepdaughter instead. He took off work many times to support her and would miss all of mine. I told him how it made me feel and that it made me not want him around after a while. He made a significant effort to be there for me in the last three years especially, and he was doing a lot better. He showed up a little more and took a more active role again. Then, during a lunch, he surprised me by bringing his wife and stepdaughter. We talked about my upcoming wedding, and he asked me to change the date because his stepdaughter wants to book her wedding for this year, and the only date is the same as mine. He told me I was willing to get married next year, so I could still change it now and have time. My wedding is scheduled for December. I asked what he was talking about. His stepdaughter said dad needs to be at her wedding because he's giving her away, and if I want him to do the same, which he already agreed to, I need to change or he'll be going to hers. I asked dad if it was true and he said it didn't have to be. I asked him if he would choose her wedding over mine and he said yes. So I told him to screw off and forget about coming to my wedding. Then I looked into his stepdaughter's stupid smug face and told her to enjoy my dad since her own never wanted her and never loved her, but at least mine had been good to me before her. I also told him that I hoped my stepsister's dad would come back and she dumped him for the real one since he dumped me for a fake. Dad texted me dozens of times after lunch, saying I reacted too spitefully and his stepdaughter did nothing wrong and I made her cry in a cafe full of people. Am I the idiot? Edit, I booked my wedding day over a year ago. What the actual heck is your dad doing? Not only did he completely dismiss your wedding, but he's also once again accommodating his stepdaughter over you. Not to mention, he also knew when your wedding date was. Also, why did the step idiot choose your day? There are legit 364 other days she could choose. I don't understand how your dad keeps falling for your stepsister's power play repeatedly. He really asked you to change your wedding day. That's insane. How convenient that out of all the days in a year, it just so happened that her wedding had to fall on the same day as yours. But just for spite, I'd book the venue she wants just for it to sit empty on that date so she can't use it. I am so, so, so sorry for you after reading your story. Your father is not worth your time or anything from you at all. He is stupid for putting her above you all the time. Hopefully, you can have a wonderful wedding without him. I get the feeling that if OP had moved her date, somehow, her stepsister would have had some issue that postponed her wedding and the only alternative date would just happen to be OP's new date. Honey, I can't imagine that the only date the stepdaughter could have picked had to be the one day you picked for your wedding. It sounds like it's time to block your father if he chooses his stepdaughter after this. I'm so sorry that your mom died. I'm a mom and I'm sending you virtual hugs. I hope your future in-laws will take you in and love you like you deserve. Of course, you are not the idiot. So my husband, 29, and I, 32 female, live in an extremely high cost of living area. I work a job that pays decently well, which is kind of necessary to live where we do. My husband worked a job for years that paid less than mine did, but was okay overall, though he absolutely hated working there. Around October of last year, my husband managed to get a job in his dream career field. He'd been working at it for years and was really excited about finally getting there. The big issue, however, is that the pay in his field is abysmal. He works as a freelancer, which is standard in his industry, so his job has zero benefits and it's a pretty significant pay cut from his old job. We don't have combined finances and after he took the new job, we had to rearrange how we pay for things to account for his lower income. 
Previously, he covered a slightly larger percentage of the expenses due to me having student loans to pay off while he didn't. As it is now, I have to be the breadwinner since his income was basically halved, paying for a larger portion of the expenses. I sat him down recently and told him I felt he needed to quit his job and find a better paying field because it wasn't feasible. He got upset since, like I said, this is something he's dreamed of for years and worked really hard to get, which I understand, but I feel this isn't fair to me. We've had to cut back on many things and there's no sign of a pay increase at this point. I feel like I'm carrying him. He offered to get a part-time job on the side, but anything he could get that would be feasible for him while keeping his current job wouldn't provide much. He suggested we move somewhere less expensive, to which I said no, since we'd have to go quite a way to find something in that range, and it'd mean ridiculously long commutes to my work and being further away from my family. He offered to have his parents help, which I don't want because it's not a long-term solution. He's extremely upset, and I understand it because I know he worked hard to get here. If he quit now, it'd kill his career and it would be tough for him to get another shot at this job. It's not like we're struggling, which is true, we can pay rent and put food on the table, but I hate feeling like this. I work long days at a rather difficult job, while he works from home doing something he did before as a hobby and only makes half as much money now. My point is that it's not like he has to stop doing what he does altogether since, as I mentioned, he did it as a hobby beforehand. Still, he's upset because he said this is the only thing he's ever wanted to do career-wise, and giving it up now would mean he likely would never be able to make it work. Am I the idiot? I understand this is important to him, but I'm starting to resent him because I feel like the burden of our finances is being placed on me, and we've had to cut back on many things. So, he worked for years helping to pay off your student loans in a job he hated, and whilst he was slaving away at a job he didn't like, you were okay, but as soon as the boot was on the other foot, it's a problem. How many years did he work at a job that he hated while he carried the burden of the finances so you could pay off your student loans? You are the idiot, lol. The hypocrisy. Right? He worked a job he hated and paid the majority of their costs because Princess Selfish here had student loans. Now that he's doing something he likes and she's the main breadwinner, she sits him down and tells him he has to quit his dream job. She does all of this when they're not even struggling. I feel like I'm carrying him. The way he carried your student loan riddle butt for years. What have you tried to do yourself? Just because you make more money and work long hours doesn't mean the onus is on him to pull his weight. It doesn't sound to me like he's being a lazy freeloader to me. He worked a job that made him miserable to help get your student loan debt paid off. Now he's finally happy. It sounds like you're the one who wants to live in an expensive way in order to keep your current job and be near your family. You, you, you. You want your husband to leave the job he loves and return to a job he hates so you can keep living in your fancy house. Get a divorce for his sake. My friends and I planned a dinner and drinks out at a brewery this past weekend. A friend with whom we're cordial said they made a reservation. I was the first one to arrive with my wife. Turns out the reservation was for outdoors. I asked if we could move indoors. They said yes, but needed a few minutes. As we wait, more friends arrive and we're all led to our table. All had no issues being indoors. We ordered our first round of drinks while others arrived. The friend who made the reservation walks in without his wife. He asks why we were indoors when he made the reservation for outside. He informs us that he brought his three dogs. He says a table is still available so we can move outside. He asks why we moved the reservation inside. I said I didn't think it mattered and preferred to sit indoors. He said another friend brought their dog too. I said I'm going to stay here, I don't really want to sit outside. I informed him that letting everyone else know you're bringing your dogs is need to know information. He said we were supposed to be sitting outside so it didn't matter. I said it does matter. I don't want to sit around four dogs while I eat and drink. He called me an idiot for switching it up and not telling him. The friend group was split. Some people went outside to be nice, but the night fizzled out and wasn't really what everyone expected. Am I the idiot? Edit, the person who made the reservation volunteered. He did not plan the outing. It was more like a group chat. Hey, anyone want to do this? People were interested, a place was chosen, and the guy who brought the dogs volunteered to make the reservation. You are the idiot simply for moving it indoors without asking anyone first. Like, not even one person. A couple of quick calls to ask what everyone preferred, if there was a specific reason for being outside, would have been the better thing to do rather than decide for everyone without consulting first.
Then you sat inside, pouting and wanting to be right, forcing everyone else to choose between what is now two groups, and creating an awkward environment on what was supposed to be a nice evening out. OP kind of rubs me the wrong way. As you said, they sat inside to pout, forcing a split in the group, and the way they said some people went outside to be nice, as if no one could possibly prefer sitting outside with the other people and dogs, just feels a little main character-ish. Well, I don't know, I love dogs. I own an enormous black lab that is the best dog. However, I don't feel the pressing need to take my dog everywhere I go. The dog is fine at home, enjoying the AC and shedding on my couch. Speaking of AC, I don't know about everyone else, but it has been insanely hot here. No way in heck I'd sit outside sweating my tatas off because some guy couldn't stand to be away from his dog for an hour. I think making reservations to specifically accommodate my own whims is idiot, and the guy had coordinated with another person about bringing his dog too, but couldn't be bothered to let the rest of the group know that it was going to be a dinner with the side of dog hair and sweat. He brought three dogs. Screw anyone who does that. Dogs, cats, babies, children, plus ones, friends, relatives, in-laws, etc. Our uninvited guests unless agreed to in advance by the host or agreed to by the whole group, if it's a group event, regardless of who organizes the group event. The same applies to locations and events. So, not the idiot. I hate when people impose their dogs on others like that. So my nearly adult male dad left my mom when I was a young teen to be with his wife, the woman he was cheating on my mom with. My dad didn't want me to think badly of him, but I did. He knew I did, and he knew he couldn't change my mind easily. We always knew my parents would end up with shared custody until I was the age I am now. From experience, the judges in family court will only stop enforcing shared custody when a kid turns my age and speaks out, any younger and they insist on 50-50. I also knew mom would struggle on her own because while she did work, she never made as much as my dad. She also wouldn't get child support because of the 50-50, and it wasn't ordered even with the difference in income. So when dad pleaded with me to give him a chance to show he could still be a good dad and said he would do anything for me, I told him to keep supporting mom and ensure she wouldn't end up struggling while he got off easy. I told him she deserved that, at least after what he did, and that I deserved to see my mom doing well. My dad agreed and he paid it as child support instead of spousal support, whatever it's called. It helped mom and she went back to school to get a better job. Dad is still paying that money. He knows I appreciate him doing it, and he also knows it's one of the only reasons I didn't just decide to say screw him and never want a relationship again. My mom is also less stressed. She has mixed feelings about my dad giving her money when legally he doesn't need to, but she also knows this is the only way for me not to feel the need to help support her. Where my dad's wife comes into it is this. She never liked that my dad paid this child support. She never liked that I insisted on my dad and I having a relationship. But now my dad's house is struggling a bit and they need to make some changes. His wife's son and daughter were in dance, football, softball, karate, music lessons and an art class as paid extracurriculars. My dad and his wife also have a baby together. The wife's kids had to cut two activities because they couldn't afford them anymore. This makes his wife angry because if dad wasn't paying the money, they could still afford those things. She told me I should stop obligating my dad to support my mom because they need it more and my mom isn't their problem. I told her she and her kids are not my problem. She told me they're my family while mom is not her or her kids' family or my dad's anymore. I told her she and her kids are dad's family but not mine. She told me they need all of dad's money right now before more things must be cut back on. I shrugged in response. She told me I was so callously flippant and it wasn't a good look to care so little about my siblings' lives. Only one of her kids, the baby, is technically my half-sibling. Am I the idiot? What the heck did she expect? Sleeping with a married man. She can get a second job if money is a problem. Good to know your dad is only 50% sleazebag, not 100%. Regardless, it's absolutely not your problem. I hope your mom is doing well now. Every time she brings it up, Remind her that it was her choice to sleep with a married man. She literally messed around and found out. She's a goddamn hypocrite. I expect you to have empathy for me and mine. Yeah, like you had empathy for the man's wife and child whom you slept with. Absolutely not the idiot. Out of curiosity, how long will daddy continue paying? Until you're 18 or until mom graduates? For me, it's until mom graduates. It's what I feel he owes. I can't technically make him pay that long, though. Then I'll be in a much better place. 
After Dad screwed her over so badly, it's the least he can do, and the least I expect. The stepmom actually said her kids needed therapy to help them adjust to such big changes. This made me laugh because they cut two activities out of a long list. I, 30 female, and my husband, 33, have been married for three years with an infant son. For background, mother-in-law is very difficult and has no respect for boundaries. A few years ago, I told my husband he needed to step up and stand up to her after she'd gone too far. She would call me names and blatantly say I wasn't good enough for her son. To be fair, he spoke to her and things improved. She's still not great, but I bite my tongue and I pick my battles. It's not easy, but I try my best. This weekend, my husband, me and my in-laws went to a wedding. Mother-in-law and sister-in-law decided they didn't want to pay for accommodation as it was expensive, and they asked my husband if they could stay in our house. We stayed in the wedding hotel, meaning they were in our house alone for the night and most of the next day. My husband didn't ask my permission for them to stay, but I've had my sister stay in our house when we weren't there, so I couldn't really say no. However, being asked would have been good. When we came home this weekend after the wedding, my in-laws were in my home. They'd been given the guest bedroom. I cleaned the house and had it ready for them, which is not an easy task when you have a small baby in tow. On discussion with my in-laws, it turned out my sister-in-law had slept in my bed and my mother-in-law joined her in bed the next morning. My room was not clean and I'd left it in such a way that I was embarrassed that someone even saw it. They overstepped a boundary by entering my bedroom and then getting into my bed. Honestly, the sheets were anything but clean and the thought of them in my marital bed gives me shivers. My husband then says he told them they could and he didn't think I care because my sister slept in the bed with me once when there was nowhere else to sleep and I was with her. He thinks I'm overreacting. I was so upset I didn't speak to my husband and now he's furious saying I embarrassed him in front of his family. Uh, yeah, a huge no to anyone sleeping in your bed without a conversation and both sides agreeing. It's weird your family would still choose to sleep in your room knowing it wasn't prepared for a guest like the other room as well, but all right, I guess they were given permission. The main issue comes down to your husband giving them the option without talking to you first. It's not okay for sure. Speak to him and place hard boundaries. If your husband will not step up and keep disrespecting your boundaries, maybe it's time to think about you stepping out or bringing this to him. I wouldn't want my child to be raised in an environment where their own father and paternal side disrespect the mother and don't see anything wrong while doing so. Not the idiot, but get marriage counselling ASAP.